thank you for worshiping with us. We're glad you're here and Ruth, Pastor Ruth. We trust that the Spirit will be with you in our worship today and all of you. Please fill up the worship card and place it in the offering plate when it comes around. Chants of flowers are placed to the glory of God by Sandy Nelson for her birthday. Woo! And many blessings. Today, please join us in the fellowship hall following worship for treats and conversation. Pick up a new glimpses reading material for your quiet time. We have a clipboard if you can help bring desserts for one month at a time. Skipping, uh, that is not counting birthday Sunday. Homemade or store bought works. Please sign up near the kitchen. Next Sunday, worship continues at 10 a.m. Zoom is available through our website. Next week is also birthday Sunday and noisy offering. Birthdays this week, Monday, Edie Graber. Happy birthday, Edie. Um, Wednesday, Sandy. Sandy Nelson. Joys and concerns. Judy Mello is requesting prayers for her daughter, Lisa, who was hospitalized last week. Keep the family in your prayers and send a card. Hawaii Relief. If you would like to make a donation to the Relief of Fires in Maui and the Big Island of Hawaii, please use the ELCA disaster envelope there at the entry. entry. Uh, also may be found in your queue and label it Hawaii Relief under domestic disaster. Thank you. Back to school drive last week. Uh, this is the last week. Please bring your donations for Lutheran Social Services back to school giveaway by next Sunday. Pick up a flyer showing the items needed to fill up a backpack. If you're unable to shop for the supplies, we can do that for you. Karen, come on. Um, a suggested donation of $20 will fill up an entire backpack. Can be placed in the envelope in the offering plate and please label it school drive or uh, place the offering plate or give it directly to Karen Como. Thank you. Uh, you can pick up these announcements in the market. And Pastor Ruth's um, contact information is at the bottom of the page. Karen gets very excited when she gets to go shopping and buy a good backpack. She just gets tickled beyond belief. I think it's so cute. Please stand and join in the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have ordered your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy.
God is a cup of cool, cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Call, claim the gift of God's mercy. You are free and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, the 
For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Sabbath, of Abel Manoah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill him. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of wisdom, word of life. The second reading is from Romans. A right relationship with God is not something we achieve by heroic efforts. It is a gift received in the proclamation whose content is Jesus Christ. This proclaimed word creates our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, Christian proclamation is an indispensable component of God's saving actions. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend to the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, but there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him. And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thanks be to God. saying, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. 
But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week you will remember uh, Jesus went after hearing about the death of John the Baptist, got in a boat and went up the lake to be alone, but the people heard about it and they followed him. And he had compassion for them. And so he came to the land and he healed the sick and he preached the word. When the disciples wanted to send them away to find food, Jesus said, no, you give them something to eat. And they didn't know what to do. But Jesus took that five loaves and two fish and blessed it and there was enough for 5,000 families with 12 baskets of food left over. So this picks up right where that left off. Jesus sent the disciples out in the boat to go to the other side of the sea while he went up to the mountain to pray. And when he came down in the morning, he saw that the boat with his disciples were being tossed all over the place. Literally the word was, is tortured. The boat was being tortured by the waves. It doesn't say this word exactly, but he acted with compassion. There's that word again. He walked out to take care of them. And Peter, and, and, and they, were, they were hysterical. This is a ghost coming to us. They couldn't see that it was Jesus. Just imagine all that rain and it's before dawn in the morning and they think it's a ghost and Jesus says, it's okay, it's just me. You're fine, everything's good. Peter believes that if Jesus will call him, he can walk in the water. But he's asking Jesus, if it is you, Lord, command me to come to you. So Jesus said, come. And Peter got out there and he started to walk. And then, and then the waves were coming and he remembered what he was doing and that he shouldn't be able to do this. And he started to go on. And he yelled, Lord, save me. And Jesus plucked him up and got back on the boat. He said to Peter, which he says often to Peter and other disciples, you are a little faith. Why did you doubt me? You know the Roadrunner cartoons? Everybody's seen Roadrunner cartoons. Where the Roadrunner warns he's running off the cliff and he's off the cliff a few steps and then he realizes that he's off the cliff and he looks up and he looks down and boom, he falls like a stone. And that's kind of what I imagined happening with Peter in that moment. He was terrified. Here we have terror and Jesus responded. Every time I walk in the door downstairs when Sandy's in the office, she says, hello. I know she wants to know for sure who's coming in the door. If I answer her, 
I say, it's just me. She knows my voice by now. Okay. Okay. You know, there are times when we can be afraid of the unknown. Startled. Throughout Matthew, Jesus is compassion is mentioned over and over again. All these healing stories that we've been hearing for the last several weeks, every time Jesus had compassion for the crowds. Jesus had compassion for the sick. So I looked up compassion in Merriam-Webster dictionary and it says compassion is sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. I love that definition. It's so clear. Sympathetically conscious of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. It's not just pity. Pity is just feeling sorry for somebody. And who wants pity? I don't know. Really. No. He's aware of Peter's fear. He is aware of the sick people. He is aware of the frightened people. Aware. He feels their feelings. And he's going to do whatever he has to do to alleviate. Now, we, we could argue, did Jesus really walk on the water? I mean, that's a really good use of our time, right? Did it really happen? How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? But maybe the question rather than did he really walk on the water is, what is God trying to say to us with having Jesus walk on the water? There's never been a claim since then of any single person walking on water. Not once. Why in this instance is God having Jesus walk on the water? Well, I think it was expediency. Jesus sees the disciples terrified, being whipped around in the storm, and he needs to get to them as quickly as possible. A boat isn't going to do it, even if there was one around. There isn't a helicopter to drop him on the boat. So he just walks across the water. Jesus had compassion for them. He needed to get there as quickly as possible. Because God always comes down to us. We don't have to go searching for God. God always comes to us in our need. We don't climb Jacob's ladder because God always comes down to us. Why does Peter get picked out? I mean, this is just the first time in Matthew's Gospel, but it's going to happen a whole lot more times. And Peter is the one disciple. Is he idyllic? Is he a perfect disciple? Well, we all know that's not true. But he's really just a typical disciple. A typical person. Matthew sees the life of the post-Easter community mirrored in the experiences of the 12 disciples. How bizarre and less effective math would Matthew have been if, if he had not called out Peter singularly? What if Jesus called all the disciples out? Can you imagine it? The disciples, all the 12 disciples crawl out of the boat and Jesus had to pluck them out one by one? I think we've missed the point of the story. But Jesus picks out one, Peter. Robert Smith writes this about, in the narrative of that wild crossing of the sea, Peter stands forth not as an incomparable hero, but as an exemplar of varied facets of the community's life, all mixed and mingled in disciples of every age, 
boldness, even rashness, and obedience, fear and prayer, littleness of faith, and confession. As soon as Jesus was on the boat and the storm calmed, the disciples all proclaimed him, Lord of all, the Son of Man. You are the one. They could see it in that moment. We are all Peter. Uh, some of us more than others. I used to say I only opened my mouth to change feet. I could be that brash, impulsive person speaking out and then going, whoops, and stepping back. I could be that bold person and I could be that obedient person. I can be that person who fears. And let's face it, we all have fears in our lives, even if we try to pretend that we don't. There are things that frighten all of us. But we also have faith. We also know that our Lord comes to us. That's what the whole story of the gospel is about. Jesus walks on the water to get to the disciples because that was what was needed in the moment. Was it a miracle? Yes, it was a miracle. But has it ever been used again? No. Because it just fit that exact moment. Jesus always comes to us, the Peters, the Matthews, the Marks, the Lukes, the Thomases, whatever mood we're in at the moment, doubting, crazy. You know what happens with Peter at the end, promising Jesus he would never never leave him, never betray him, and you practically in the next breath deny his existence. Peter is the true human. He affects all of us in some degree or another. And God always comes to us in one another. He will love you to each other and he care for you. In moments of laughter and tears, in our joys and in our sorrows, in our fears, in our hopes and our dreams. He comes to us in the Word. He comes to us in the sacrament of the altar. Because God always comes to us, and if it requires walking across water to get to us in time, that's what God will do. Nothing will stop God from coming to us. Amen.
besiege our joys and concerns. Let us offer our prayers to the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel, both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sea and sky, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains, proclaim your glory. Prosper the work of ecologists as they teach us new ways to care for the environment. Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters. We pray especially this day for the people of Hawaii, the Big Island, but especially Maui. The death toll is now at 93 as they continue to uncover bodies in the names of buildings. Bring them peace, bring them comfort, be with them in their sorrows. Give all that is needed to rebuild the city of Lahaina. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. Instill in local, regional, national, and global politics political and civic leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. We pray for children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compare and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to many who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick. Among ourselves, we pray for Mike Hornbeck, continuing to struggle with severe pain from cancer. And we pray for all in our family and other families facing the challenges of cancer. For Peggy Hubbard's grandson, Victor, with the United States Navy, deployed to the Gulf of Oman. <clears throat> for Karen's cousin, Christopher, recovering in the hospital from a ruptured aorta. We pray also for Ryan Graver, David Witt, Janet Sims, Diane Kyle, Lisa, Lisa Mello recently hospitalized several times this week for Judy Mello and the entire Judy and the entire Mello family. For Nancy Sampson, Debbie Mahigian, and all in the prayer wall. For the most of you, pray. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's greet one another with a sign of God's peace. We will receive the offering. Mm.
is right. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us so that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Him. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending king. <laughs> saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, for your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I want to remind you that uh, the chalice has two division here. Uh, wine is red, grape juice is white. You will receive the host from me, and then you will dip your host in the wine or the grape juice. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. You will receive it. Thank you.
Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest city, bless keep and sustain you now and into the end of the age. Amen. <laughs>